Yesterday I came out and uh, was going to do some composting, and I saw you, I showed you a little short video of uh, the infestation of halloquin bugs that I had. Folks, I originally came out to do a video on composting, and when I got out here, I saw all these brown leaves. Uh, I still see I left one there, brown leaves, and then when I got closer over here. I saw all these halloquin bugs, uh, I saw white flies, I saw cabbage moss underneath the leaves. So I ended up taking all the leaves that were diseased or damaged and you'll see how much I had to take away. But if you'll notice, the inner leaves are still within the plant so I am expecting them to grow back you can see that one is almost stripped completely uh, that's what happens when you're gardening you garden organic no pesticides I'm still not sad we've used uh, about seven to eight different harvesting from this same patch of collard greens so I can't complain that I haven't gotten. And there, look at there. One Holoquin I did not kill. Can you see him? So my way of killing them is with a spray of golden with golden dawn you hear me with a spray of dawn soap and water that's all it takes to kill them uh, cabbage moss uh, uh, and uh, white flies and uh, I even showed you or talked to you about how to get rid of them so I decided to go do some research um, last night and uh, the halloquin bug um, it's black and red it looked kind of orange to me uh, and it's really just another stink bug uh, and uh, they like the cruciferous vegetables and to make it easy the vegetables with sulfur in them that gives them that distinct bitter flavor uh, and I had an infestation of Halloquins, they have a four generation life cycle, uh, poor planting season, and uh, understand where they come from is they sit underneath uh, leaves and other decaying material waiting on you to print cabbage, collards, broccoli, uh, bok choy, all things that we planted in our garden this year. And then that's what they attack. And the signs of them are discolored leaves. Uh, I'm looking at, I, I picked so many last night, but I'm looking right here, there's still some discolored leaves that are out here. And uh, in a minute, I'm gonna search for some eggs because they said the eggs come in double rows in 10 to 15 uh, per row. Uh, and uh, that if you catch them there, that you can eliminate them. Uh, but um, they are voracious eaters. They say that they attack the leaves and the stems and they take all the juice from it, uh, eventually stunning the growth because of how ferocious they are on feeding on it. Uh, so uh, we need to make sure, and I showed you how uh, you saw the other video where we um, had picked all the uh, collard greens and we actually went on inside and made the crock pot collard greens uh, and you saw how plentiful it was and now at this point 
you see how much I had to pull off uh, and I'm going to hope that everything has come back so we'll wait and we'll see the eggs of the uh, I found out of the Holoquin bug uh, usually takes about 20 days to hatch but if it's hot if it's warmer they hatch in four days so four days later um, they hatched because we saw one about four days ago and I came out here yesterday and it was so many brown leaves the stems were brown the discoloration around the leaves tells you that it's been attacked uh, white flies eggs were underneath and I'm looking right now it looked like it might be a harlequin out here right now um, on the back of that leaf right there is that a harlequin so I still didn't get them all so I'm gonna go back through today and I'm going to search the plant again and see if there's more there because I see dead leaves too. Uh, oh, wow. Look at this whole stem. The darkness, that's where they all are eating on the plants. And then it's discolored up here and I'm looking at this larger leaf and I can see if I can turn around and show you the discoloration in that leaf. Uh, it's a nice one. But I got to take it off because it's discolored. And you even can see the white fly larvae that was in back of there. But as I told you yesterday, that the cure for this is, um, is darn dish soap and water. And that's what I got in this bottle. And I, I was pretty sure I saw a halicorn here and see the white flies they are dying i'm gonna kill them too remember the leak underneath the leaves that's where they hide in that haven't seen any halloquin but i know that they're there because when you see me take the leaves off they have already damaged it i'm just doing a quick search of the plant to see if I can find any of the bugs ah right here Wanting to fall off in my hand when I shoot him, as he did. And I'll show you what they look like. And you can see he's no longer moving. Soap and water. And as they say, it's easier to work with their cycle than it is to try to fight them. So I'm also looking for those black and white eggs that may be under the leaves so the next generation I can eliminate now and not worry about them hatching again. but I have to look under all the leaves. Ah, white flies that eventually turn the cabbage moth all over that and change the color of that. Ah, baby halloquin. So that tells you another generation has hatched. I'm going to show you that. You want to see what a cabbage worm looks like in the baby stage? Same method. I 
continue to look. Why did I do that? The white butterflies are the source of the the cabbage moth that I just showed you. That's what these what I showed you all the little little like white dots. As a matter of fact, I'll bring it closer so you can see it. This is all the those little white dots are the larvae. Look at there, cabbage worm bloomed. And they're gonna get bigger and bigger. And the bees are coming. Matter of fact, they're getting upset with me over here spraying. Uh, but I know they do the work, but I did some work too. And I know I need them, so I'm going to let them fly around. Just avoid getting stung. Very proud of how the Brussels sprouts are coming along. I'm seeing cabbage moth. I haven't seen a halloquin bug amongst any of them thus far. And I know this may seem tedious and why I got to do this. Well, you don't want to lose everything you did because remember, we did everything from seeds. Everything I hear is from a seed. We did not buy one transplant this year, not one. So it was a lot of work. And you want to see success when you work that hard. Today I'm going to do a potato galette. I'm actually going to do two of them. Onion. Orange bell pepper. Potatoes. Eggs. Bacon tomato jam. My seasoning rub. Basil. Sage. Parsley. Dill weed. Shaved Parmesan cheese. Coriander seeds. Salt and pepper. Let's start by chopping or moon slicing the onions. Next, let's julienne the orange bell pepper. Now, let's thinly slice some potatoes. Not as thin as a potato chip, not as thick as hash browns. Somewhere in between. Now let's begin assembly. Today I'm going to use one cast iron skillet to do one potato galette and a non-stick skillet to do the other one. Start out on medium heat. Preheat the pan for a few minutes. And then start putting in your olive oil. Make sure you cover the entire bottom so the potatoes don't stick to the bottom of the pan. The 
Let's put a little bacon grease in one. Now let's put some fresh herbs in the bottom of each one. Let's start with some basil. Some parsley. As these herbs saute, it should flavor the oil also. And now some sage. And it also give the galette uh, a distinct and different look. As the bottom will become the top and when we flip it over. Now let's begin laying the potatoes around the circumference of the pan. Now let's do the second pan. Okay, finish the second pan, and you remember that adage that I keep telling you, we have to season the stages. So now we're going to grind it freshly, so. Fresh brown black pepper. Let's take that coriander again that we grew in our garden in the backyard, our herb garden. And let's put it in the mortar and pestle and let's grind it down. Now that we grind it down, let's spread it on each gallop. Spice rub. Remember, you can go to my website and purchase it. Putting it up about me. Let's put some fresh aromatics, some onions, and the bell pepper that we cut up in the beginning onto each gallop. Again, a flavor enhancer.
Okay, let's do the next layer of potatoes after we put this dill weed on. Okay, yep, from the little garden outside, fresh dill. You're not restricted to just using two layers of potatoes. You can go three, four, even up to five. I wouldn't go past that. But remember, you have to season between each layer to get full flavor, or you're just going to have bland potatoes. And if you put more layers, you're going to have to increase the cooking time. But these two layers, uh, will get us great tasting, delicious delights. Do a little olive oil so that our seasonings, since this is our top layer, so that the seasonings that we'll put on will stick. Spice rub again. that have been grinded. pepper we'll read again Fresh cracked black pepper. Mm -hmm. 
So. Now let's cover them so they can steam. Potatoes can get cooked thoroughly inside. We will later put it in the oven to make sure that it is crusted. We have let them steam long enough. Let's put it in a 350 degree preheated oven to finish cooking. I decided to make a breakfast galette tomato bacon jam that you can purchase on my website. The recipe is available there. Spread it all over the top of the galette. Here's some shaved Parmesan. Let's take two eggs. Let's whip those eggs and spread it evenly across the entire delight. make indentions in the galette to hold the two remaining eggs and we're going to crack them in their hole and let them be sunny side up. And then I decided, well, why not? Let's put some kielbasa on here. Let's just go all the way. Let's place it back in the oven to finish cooking. Now I'm going to place them on the platter. See our breakfast galette with the tomato bacon jam? Like, subscribe, comment, and let's see if we caught the infestation. But stay tuned. Stay with us. And see what we see what happens. Thanks for joining us today.